All right, in this video, I wanted to go over a little bit about fault tracing. Let me see if I can get the display. There we go, at the right angle so you don't have the glare. All right, so um, let's see if there's any fault. We're going to turn the key on. Wait for it to wake up. And wait for the LCD to wake up. And I do have down here... It's probably hard for you to see, but it says caution, check EVC, see operator's manual. So it says check EVC system one is what it says. Now, what that means is there's a code. So let's go see if we can find the code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the back arrow button. We can go back to this screen now. Now we have two separate screens. So the back arrow button sometimes will let you back up. So now I wanna scroll to the right and now what I see in this LCD display is it says fault one, all right? Push the enter knob again, and it says there it goes. Now it tells you where the fault is. It says check EVC system one. Now, I would need a scan tool right now maybe to diagnose this problem, but there is a back door into EVCC systems, EVC D and E systems to look at fault codes on the display. And that is to put it in service mode. So in the EVCC system, to put it in service mode, push and hold the multifunction button in. About six seconds. You get a tone. OEM mode, which is service mode, is activated. Okay? And there's your fault code. Now, if the fault code doesn't pop up right away, just push the enter knob a couple times and it'll usually say false. And then you can scroll through it. So this is mid-187, PSID 226 FMI 9. I can go into the book, and we can look up either in the back or in the front, and there will be a section in the book that will list all of the mid-187 faults, all right, the parameter ID numbers, the proprietary, the sub-identification numbers, and the proprietary sub-identification numbers. These mean parts. That's the part, as I've told you before. FMI is the failure mode indicator. That's the indication of what is wrong with that part. So let's see what it says here. Mid-187, PSID 226. So I'm gonna go to PSID, come down here, and I'm gonna look for 226. And 226 says, PSID 226 SAE J1939 data link data link 2 mid 164. So it is a CAN bus problem. All right. So if I bring this up a little bit, you can see PSID 226 and then PSID 226 SAE J1939 at data link data link 2 mid 164. So mid-164 is the HCU, correct? Interesting that you see that the, the mid number that's given in the fault is mid-187. So mid-187, and this in the book says mid-164. That's a communication error between the PCU and the HCU. That's what that's telling you right away. Whenever you see those two numbers, then this is saying I can't talk to this, and this is saying I can't talk to that. So it's probably either a J1939 data link line or a second data link line. So let's see what the FMI 9 is. So let's go to page 238. All right. So that's where we're going to go. All right. There we go. Okay. So J1939 data link to mid-164. All right. So what it says here in the book. It says the PCU lost communication with a helm that previously had been configured on the network. Warning is displayed in the tachometer display. An orange lamp flashes in the, in the display. Impossible to make request active station from one or more helm stations. All right, reason for that is this was previously um, set up as a dual helm station. So this is telling you that one of the stations is not communicating. It's, lo it's lost one of the communications. So what are you gonna do? Auto config the system, right? So we're gonna auto config the system. So I'm gonna back out. I'm gonna take the 
multifunction button and the back arrow button to put it in calibration mode. And there's calibration mode, and then I'm going to push the two multifunction button and the back arrow button to put it in auto configuration. Now what it's going to do, it's going to configure that second helm out of the system. Anytime you have a fault where there's a communication between one of the helms, what you definitely want to do is you want to take all of the other helms upstream and disconnect them. Come all the way down to the main helm that has the key switch. That's the first one that the engine connects to, to that PCU. You want to connect it to the PCU that's the closest PCU, all right? And then rewire everything out. So what are you going to take out of the equation? The long Y-split harness, okay? So you're going to take that out. And then you're going to wire directly with your X2 data link to that HCU. So you, you do that. All right, I've got the statement says PT question mark is normal. I'm just going to hit the enter knob. Port one station, it says. That'll go away in a moment. And then hopefully the display comes up normal. Ah, uh-oh. Let's see. There we go. Now we got the fuel alarm, system information, everything looks good. Okay, I'm trying to scroll through, push enter again, push enter, push back, back button again. So now I can go back through the display. Now this one has a separate, I can actually push the far right button, exit, the left button allows me to go to multi gauges and then I can cycle through the gauges if I want. I can change the display through this next button, okay? So you can set it up that way. And it depends on how the owner is. I always say take a picture with your phone on how he has it set up, right? What's on his display right now. And if you mess with it, make sure you put it back exactly the way the consumer had it. So he's not sitting there going, why is it changed? Okay. So everything looks pretty good here for right now. All right. So sometimes um, an auto configuration can fix something, but here's a word to the wise. If you have a problem with, let's say, a helm, and that helm loses a potentiometer, if you do an auto configuration with a failed helm, what will happen is it does not see that helm because it doesn't see a remote control. And what it's going to do if you do an auto configuration, it's going to take that helm right out. And now you can't see that helm at all. So sometimes, you know, not doing an auto configuration is a good idea, okay? Next video, we'll do a little bit more on uh, diagnostics.